Hello, it's Finn. <laughs> Give me a shower. Give me a shower. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Ray. I have memory. I'm here right now. I have arrived. I'm talking about being outed. Being outed and being misgendered. And being misgendered. Yeah. Being misgendered and then being outed because we're misgendered? What? That's not a she, that's a transgender person. <laughs> that's fucked up. I got outed to 400 people on a Facebook group event thing. Oh, yeah. Mm. I got so mad. Did you, did you get mad for me? Yeah, we were so angry. Where are you? Just as you too. How, how, how long have you been on tea? 11 and a half months. And when's the last time you were misgendered? A few days ago. That's pretty common, man. Yeah. What happened? I was walking down the street, minding my own business, and a homeless man thought I was a girl. And then he changed his mind. Yeah, and then and then he was like, oh, sorry about that. And then that, then we just continued on for a day. Actually, the last time I was misgendered was by a homeless person, too. When was the last time you were outed? Was it that girl? Yeah, the girl. She was a fully grown woman, and she fucking should have known better. She's a fucking... The woman, she was, like, on my course in art school, and uh, she was a bit of a Bible basher. And there goes my dislike for the week. And then, um, when I came out to everyone in my studio, she just was really moronic about the whole thing, and she thought that... She, she genuinely said to me that she thought um, the reason that I was transitioning was because my mum turned into a man. I don't know how that makes any sense at all. But that was, that was her train of thought with it. And then I was like, no. And then um, she was just doing the whole, oh, I'm just concerned about your welfare. I don't want you to make the wrong decision. You should take your time. You shouldn't be going on hormones yet and all this shit. And I was like, all right, okay. And then I kind of, at that point, I was, I didn't have enough confidence to actually like put her in her place or anything, so I just kind of accepted it. And then I disappeared off the face of the earth for months and wasn't in art school. And then, um, then a, a good half a year later, no, more than that, three quarters of a year later, um, I go on Facebook and I'm invited to an event and it's made by this same person and she's invited every single female member of the fine art photography department um, to this girly day of pampering and um, she invited me and then I just went off my head and I stupidly posted a comment in the group saying what the fuck sort of thing but then it just made it apparent to everyone that like, it made it more obvious, so everyone definitely knew, and then there was a big load of fighting going on after that, but I definitely put her in a place that time, and she was calling me he, she, when she was replying back to me, and being like, oh, I don't mean to offend you, and then she's like, doing all that shit, yeah, so that happened. But that's the, the only major sort of outing experience that I've had. I mean, I've been outed by family members to people that I'm not necessarily comfortable with. Or not that I'm not comfortable with it, just that I've not really had the, the option because they don't understand the importance of, you know, you having the right to choose who knows your trans and who doesn't. But yeah, I was going to ask what your experiences were like. Well, the last time I was outed uncomfortably was by Google. Google. Oh, so I'm Googled you? Yeah, but I mean, obviously I'm not in the closet yeah. or anything. Um, <clears throat> not in the closet. You can't say that. I'm not stealth. Yeah. Can you say in the closet when you're trans? Do all well, if you haven't come out, then closet. maybe. But like, okay. I guess that's what outing in closet. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, before I got a chance to come out to my girlfriend's mom, she found me on the internet. And I was not happy about it. <laughs> She's like, what? It's just, it's just like, I wanted to come out to her. Like, I wanted to get to know her and then come out to her the way that I did in this roommate situation I'm in. I got to know them for like two weeks and we talked about stuff and like, 
had male bonding with the guy and like everything and then when they started talking about then they started talking about LGBT issues and they were like oh it's so random that this person was trans and I was like well it's not really that different it's not really that uncommon I'm transgender and they were like what and then we had a conversation about it instead of like finding me on the internet and then being weird about it, not knowing how to go about it, but that's the internet, that's how it works, so I don't really know if that counts as outing. Yeah, because, like, with the whole thing about your, your flatmates, yeah. I'm kind of, like, the way I see it for myself anyway is that I don't want to be stealth, necessarily, right. but at the same time, like, like, say I meet someone, there's always that fear that they're going to find out through someone else other than me. So I kind of, the way I try to do it is that I'm not going to bring up I'm trans, but I'm not going to lie to them. So if, say, a topic of conversation came up and I was like, well, I definitely have something to say, and especially if they were saying something that I disagreed with or I found offensive, then I would tell them. Right. Yeah, like it's not the first thing I tell anybody. And hey, hope, I'm trans. Yeah, and I would hope that it's not the first thing that somebody else says about me when they bring yeah. up my name. They call me that Emery. Did you know that guy's trans? This is my trans friend. No, so so being outed sucks. And um, what was the other topic? Uh, being misgendered. We don't really cover misgenderism. I think being oh, this kind of goes like a sort of privileged chat. Like, being misgendered, for me, like, I remember being pretty and being misgendered on a daily, it was on a daily basis, and it was just constant, and that kind of, my attitude towards being trans and society in general was really informed by that, and, like, it, because it takes up so much of your headspace, and because I used to get so angry about it, and I was so resentful of so many people because of it. It felt I felt like I didn't have room to grow and see like and learn about intricacies of, of other aspects of being trans and other aspects of society and like when we were talking last night about how when you're getting ready to start tea you think that you're like, yeah I've got this sorted, I know what I'm doing and you think that you've got a good grasp of everything. But then when you're like, say, a year on, and you look back on it, and you're like, whoa, well, I, I knew so little about anything. And it's like, I think once you get over the hurdle of being misgendered, it then sort of allows space to be cleared in your head that can then be taken up by other shit that you'll get really, really pissed off about. In the same way that you got pissed off about, about being misgendered. So right now for me, it's say about being outed. Passing is like, a totally, it's like a total society thing, and what other people think of you is none of your business. And if you could get out of that, then it's not going to fucking bother you at all. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's it's hard because if, you want to be seen. Yeah. Right. It's like look, because there's the difference between interpersonal sort of interactions and then there's interactions and how you're being seen more generally by society. So to say it's none it's none of our business how people see us. Well not how they or, see or what they think of what us they or, think or, of. or what they're saying about us behind our back is none of our business and that's fair enough because yeah but then if we were talking about the community like because us say as well being really visible being on YouTube we're kind of like representatives of the community and you can choose to do with it what you will. Some people really go gung-ho with it and they're like, I'm going to be an activist here, I'm going to fucking teach the world about trans issues. Other people just kind of try and stay as personal as possible. But if you're going down that road, then you have to kind of, you have to give a shit what people think. Well, yeah. Well, that's like a, a, sort of more extreme than what I was talking about. I just meant like, if I'm walking down the street and somebody says, "Excuse me, miss," I don't want it to let it ruin my day. And yeah. trans people are not the only people that get misgendered. Well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because if, like, we think about when I got misgendered the other day by the homeless guy, he corrected himself, and when he corrected himself, he didn't correct himself and go, oh, that's a trans person, I need to right. gender that person correctly. He thought, oh, I've just misgendered a cis person. Right. Which is totally different. Because you do, you forget about the fact that cis people get misgendered all the time. And it's not even that maybe they were dressing in a way that was particularly androgynous. I mean, there's people that are like blatantly on one end of the spectrum and they'll get misgendered for stupid reasons. Right. Yeah, and that made me feel a lot better when I sort of remembered that. But I remember when I was pre-T and people would say that to me to try and make me feel better. Yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, but they're not getting it every single time they walk out the door. So, yeah. yeah, but, and and I don't want to say, I don't want to say it'll pass because it may, I mean, yeah, if you plan on, if you're FTM and you plan on getting on hormones and doing all this and there is a large chance that you will stop being misgendered eventually. Um, that's not, that doesn't happen with everybody. And that's, that's where I say, it's not even that it's none of your business. It's that, like, it's not okay. It's not okay that society has this idea that this is what a male is and this is what a female is. This is what male looks like. This is what female looks like. And if I say, see this person, I'm just going to say she, because that's what I'm trained to do. But that's what they're trained to do. That's what people are trained to do. And, like, it doesn't make it okay, but there comes a point where you have to be okay with it if you want to survive the rest of the day. Mm. Because there's so many more important things going on. There's so much more about you. There's so, like, you yeah. know. It's just hard to see past that. Like, your identity when, it, it, like, I was going to say pre tea but I'm even thinking about it right now, and I still feel this way. It's like so much of my identity and so much of the way I live my life and the people I interact with, it's all to do with being trans. In the same way that some people choose to base their identity on what they do as a job, what they do for a living, so they associate with people that they work yeah, with. That's what I was thinking that's... too, is I don't like when people ask me what my profession is. Like, I would like to say well, I really love making YouTube videos and having these yeah. amazing conversations. Yeah. Or I could say, I'm a barista. But either one of those things, they don't define me. Yeah, it's just a part of you. And I don't like being defined as a barista, but that's what I do. And if you think of me differently because I'm a barista, or if you think of me differently because I'm transgender, that's your problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because see, the, the thing with talking about, like society being trained to go right, oh you're you're wearing a shirt and trousers, you're a guy, right. sort of thing. That then is making me think about the true scum community. Yeah. And when they will pick out certain people on Tumblr that they'll say I identify as male but I like to wear makeup or I like to wear a skirt sometimes mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they're mm -hmm. then like, well what are you fucking complaining about if you're getting misgendered? You need to just accept the fact that that's the way it is. That's inner community perpetuation of bullshit. Yeah. In my humble opinion. Because then it's, you're breaking down the whole, your but gender you know, versus you, your gender expression. Where do you draw the line, you know? What line? Like, uh, how far do you, should we expect mainstream society to go with that? To understand that well, a man okay. in a skirt is still a man. Well, a man in a skirt is still a man. We're in Scotland. But... <laughs> a kilt is not a skirt. Exactly! Thank you, Jess. Okay, define skirt. <laughs> <laughs> but, like... I understand where you're coming from. Because you're talking about... You're thinking of someone in particular. No, it's not, it's not even that, yeah, yeah, I'm thinking of said person in particular. But what I mean is that, you know... Basically, what I'm trying to say is this conversation can go on for years upon years upon years because, like, it just doesn't end, you know? Mm. It's... But, okay, so, it all comes down to how much you really give a shit. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to, like, how you're going to react to it, and then there's also the part where society needs to be educated more. Oh, yeah. But that's not going to come for a very long time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, let's give him an outro. We're going to the zoo. <laughs> We're going to go and misgender some animals. <laughs> Bye. Boy. Uh, yeah, so, um, should I apologize? <laughs> No. Uh, well, I guess, like, if you don't agree with anything, we're just sort of having a conversation here. Hi! Okay, well, don't be offended, we're just spitballing. Okay, right, um, see you next week. Bye-bye.